All right, so I wanted to make a quick demo. Uh, it's just a just an overview of what SureTrack is and what um, what it does. This is our actual farm site ANS uh, that I work for. We got a couple systems over here. You see the bins with the blue. That's three different systems we got, and then these bins we haven't put it in yet, but we're working on it here shortly. Um, and I won't go through everything. You know, there's there's a few other things in here that this will do, but just for time purposes, I just want to go through the the actual drying or hydrating portions of it, and I can show you kind of what we've done. Um, so you just sign into this from anywhere, phone, uh, computer, doesn't matter. Just a username and password. You come in, you can customize your farm to look like this if you want. Uh, it doesn't have to. You can just be like a row of bins, and you can just put, you know, north bin number one. We have these named, uh, like this one's shop east, shop west, that sort of thing. Uh, so once you're in like this, so what I do is just go over here to storage. You know, these are actual the bins right now. Uh, this one's running. Looks like we got soybeans in there. Not running. We got wheat in that one. And then we got all these other ones that they're there, but they just don't have the system in them yet. So let's pick on one of these guys. So we put, we just click into it. We can take a look and zoom in here. So what this is, is you have cables. Center of the bin, perimeter cables. And that gives you the readings. I can switch this to temp and moisture. Zoom in here and you see each, each green green dot here on these cables that's two feet apart and every two feet we got a sensor as each sensor is moisture and temp so we know exactly what we're looking at here now the bin is red in the bin that's because we have it set uh, we want it to hydrate to 13 and a half percent moisture and the red doesn't mean hot it just means out of condition so we're at 9 10 11 percent so we're not within a half a point. So it's going to show red, yellow as it gets closer, green when it's good. Um, so right now this has been running. I'm not sure when we filled it. Uh, we can probably look here. Let's take a look at the graph. So in graphs, we go in and we can see our moisture and temperature based on the dates here. Let me see when we filled this. October. Let's try this. September. Let's see what this looks like. <clears throat> okay, so we're definitely somewhere in there. So you can see we put it in. Okay, about right there. So we had, that's what it would look like when we put it in, each sensor, there's 10 sensors. Um, I think there's more than that though, but the peak. So here it looks like we added a little more. You can see that blue line, the purpley blue one right up here. That means we added, it, it, it hit another sensor. So it started reading. So at the beginning of this, I did the math on this. It was like eight and a half percent is average. <clears throat> uh, and then, up here, what we're at today, it's about 9.7. So that's over a point of added moisture in these soybeans. Well, in this bin, let's see what we got here. We got 25,000 bushels roughly. So on the math, it's that's just about $5,000 worth of profit on, on adding moisture into those beans. So. <clears throat> And I can show you too, we can see how much it cost us to do that. So in this time, let's just go back to where we know we're filled. Okay, so here's the whole time it's been in there, hydrating. 
So we got 257 hours of fan run time right here. So that tells me at a dollar an hour on a 10 horse fan, you know, it costs us $257 to add 5,000. So that's, that's what we really like about this so far. We did the same thing with the wheat. We hydrated that. We got three points out of that in two months. Um, and our electricity bill is, well, we've been just hydrating this year, but if we have to dry two or three points out of wheat, maybe even four, um, it's guaranteed, I'd say, half, half the cost in electrical. So, and then, so this is a 42.7 bin. There is inventory, so it'll tell you how much is in there, but it's only, it's not exactly accurate because what it is, is it's when you cover a sensor, it knows the grain's at least that high. And then there's two feet between the sensors, so there is a little, a little room for error there, but it'll get you darn close. Uh, and then a lot of times people ask, why is my fan not running if it's raining out and I'm hydrating? It should be running high humidity, right? So here's something to look at. Um, let's go to graphs on this bin. So we know that we were running this day, right? We were running Wednesday, October 27th. And then it looks like it didn't run the next day there. Let's go to tables. Yeah. Let's go to Wednesday, October 27th. Okay, so now these are all the sensors. Okay, so on, you see the sensors here on the left. And then it's the time of day, temperature, and moisture. So with our weather station that we have outside the bin, and then we have a sensor under the floor right here. So let's see, we were... Okay, so it kicked on, at which our plenum sensor will tell us we have pressure. So we kicked on at 5 a.m. and it shut off at 8 a.m. So why did it do that? So we're hydrating to 13 and a half percent or 13.2. If you look right here, our weather station outside, we're showing 8.6, 8.5, 9.1% moisture in the air. And our plenum is the same, you know, 9.4, 9.3, 9.5, 10. So that's not going to bring us up. So then at here, this is where we reach the threshold where it wants to turn on. So we got 10.9 outside, 11.5 in the plenum under the floor. So that's going to start pushing air and that's why it turned on so a lot of people don't understand why and it's going to turn off when it gets too moist because we don't want to make this a block so that's how that works um i can always answer more questions but everything's pretty easy to, to, to set up too you know you just go into your settings here uh when you're going to set up your bin you know, here, all this, the guys will do that install it, so you don't have to worry about that, the diameters and all that. But, like, operation, if you want to change what's in there, you just put, pick which, whatever you got, commodity variety. Uh, and then you just go down to whatever you want it to do. Monitor, dry cool, hydrate, auto cool, thaw out for spring if you froze it. Uh, desired moisture, and then you just hit save settings, and you just let it go and it will do it on its own. Power usage, let's say you have, uh, let's say you have like blackout periods here. You can make it not run this time to that time if you want. Um, you can select your electrical, whoever they are, they can have control over it, which we don't do, but sometimes they'll give you a discount if they can do that. They can just turn the power on and off to it. And then, uh, we, you know, this is kind of a more advanced stuff. It just tells you where the switches are, 
we have a fan and a fan switch on our B board, so that's not such a big deal for anybody to know except the installers. So that's kind of just a quick run to, rundown of how this works, what it does. Um, obviously, I didn't hit every single point of it. We can run aeration models to see how much CFM you have through your bin and how fast you can you can uh, dry or hydrate. Um, and the nice thing about that is it uses actual data from weather of the last 10 years. So it, it has the data of the weather in the last 10 years, so it's very accurate of how it will it, what, what the system would have done for you if you would have had it. So that's a, a nice tool to have, um, which I can, you know, I just go into here and we can run a, right there, aeration simulator. So we can just run, run a simulation to see what you got. If you wanted to add a fan, what would it do for you, you know? So these were some of ours. You know, we just put the horsepower, how much green we got, and then right down here it shows what we would have done. We're trying to, I'm not sure how I ran this one, but it cost us $1,200 to, let's see. So we were drying, I think from 16 to, yeah, from 16% moisture to 13%. Cost us 1100 bucks. Got done in August. So we know we put it in there in July. So here's the 10 years. And we can see where our average moisture in the bin. Low moisture, you you can have a little bit lower on bottom maybe, but and that's another thing I want to touch on too is how does it not over dry the bottom? So that's what I was showing you with those when I was in the logs um, in the tables here. So that's why it doesn't push air that's too dry or too wet. It needs it to be within a certain range. So the idea is if you keep air between 14 and 16 pushing and you're at 12, eventually all that 12 will turn to 14 to 16 or whatever your setting may be. So that's the reasoning for that. Uh, and that's how they keep the bottom not getting to be 9, 8%. You know, because when you run it for a month straight, you don't really know what you're doing, like what kind of air you're pushing in. You could be up, you could be down. So this is, uh, makes it makes it all the same air going in all the time when it does run. So that way you're not just burning electricity and going backwards. So yeah, that's... Uh, I think that's all I'm going to go through right now, um, but just so you kind of understand what it is, what it looks like, and then uh, you get a better idea of what you're looking at. So give me a call if you need anything or have any questions. So, all right, I appreciate it. Thank you.